According to most polls, Governor Jeb Bush so far is the man to beat in the Republican race for the White House. Still undeclared, he leads in the numbers, he is a fundraising powerhouse, and he has name recognition, good or bad, that tops all others by a mile. This past Saturday, he went to Liberty University to deliver a commencement address before 34,000 on the issue of faith. What should be easy calls in favor of religious freedom have instead become an aggressive stance against it. Somebody here is being small-minded and intolerant. And it sure isn't the nuns, ministers, and laymen and women who ask only to live and practice their faith. <laughs> Federal authorities are demanding obedience in complete disregard of religious conscience. And in a free society, the answer is no. When he was done, he sat down with us, his first national television interview in months. He took tough questions on positions that have cost him with some conservatives and met them head on. That interview, unedited, right now. So I listened to your speech today at Liberty University, yeah. and you focused a lot on faith and commitment to Christian conscience, which was interesting because just recently Hillary Clinton came out and said those who hold a deep-seated religious belief have to change them, that those religious beliefs need to be changed, in particular to allow reproductive freedom for women. Your response to her? I, look, if you, if you, every, it's okay, I guess, in the secular world to be someone who's religious, but you can't act on your, on your faith, you can't, be, you can't have a conscience and act on it. That was the basic purpose of this speech, was to say that in this incredible country of ours, we need enough space for people to be able to act on their faith. And by, by the way, when they do, they do good. They, they feed the hungry, they take care of the homeless, they protect uh, people, they love people. That's, that's the beauty of our, of our heritage and our faith. I was deeply troubled by Hillary's statement that somehow, you know, you just have to put your faith and your convictions in some lockbox, I guess, and not be able to, to act on them. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the line, though, that Republicans who are social conservatives are looking to trample on women's rights from abortion to contraception. Now, I don't think they're right about that. But at the same time, I don't think it's appropriate for people on the left or people that don't have a guiding faith to be able to say to others, look, you can't do anything. I mean, this is kind of the world we're moving towards that uh, the First Amendment rights uh, only exist for people that, that uh, don't have faith? I mean, if we reflect on this the right way, I think we'll realize that we're a big enough country to allow for dissenting views on any subject. That's where we need to get. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Common Core, uh, which is obviously an issue for you, should you decide to get into this race yeah. with the GOP base. Now, those who know Common Core, according to the polls, really dislike it. The latest uh, Gallup poll put it at 58% of GOP parents have a very negative view of it. Only 19% favor it. They say it makes no sense. It forces teaching to the test. They say kids are in tears over it. Are, are they wrong? Common Core means a lot of things to different people. So they could be right uh, based on what they're, what's in front of them. Uh, I respect people having a view, but the simple fact is we need higher standards. They need to be state driven. The federal government should play no role in this either in the creation of standards, content, or curriculum. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have high standards and assess to them faithfully, we get what we have today, which is about a third of our kids being college and or career ready. And by the way, we spend more per student than any country in the world other than two or three countries. That sounds good, like higher standards sounds yeah. good, but what they seem to be complaining about is that in practice, it's irritating. The kids don't like it, the parents don't like it, and the teachers don't like it. But a, a lot of things are being, a, a social studies is being ascribed to Common Core state standards. And that's, that's not right. No, it's reading and math. Right. Uh, I hear legitimate complaints about changing, which is a dramatic change as it relates to math, where you're not just memorizing a multiplication table or an addition table, but you're also uh, in the classroom, you're challenging kids to explain why you, you got to. You have to understand it now. Yeah, because five years from now when you're taking algebra, all of the things that you learn, those building blocks, will make it possible to take higher order math. If you look at our country compared to other countries that are successful in reforming their education, we've been dumbing things down, spending more money focused on the economic interest of the adults, fighting over limited school choice and the countries that are successful reward teachers but they have high standards and they allow more options. How are you going to get right with the GOP base on this since they feel so overwhelmingly against it? 
I'm going to tell people what I think, which is high standards are better than low standards. And I'm going to show them the record in Florida where we led the nation in terms of learning gains because we had we ended social promotion. We had the most dynamic school choice programs in the country. By far, I mean, when people begin to see the Florida record and they see the learning gains that have taken place, where we're at the bottom in graduation rate and moved to the middle, where Hispanic and low-income kids are now national leaders in Florida compared to their peers, and where there's a focus on create ending this this political correctness of our time that just casts away thousands and thousands of kids. I'm, I'm willing to stand on that record and fight for it. Immigration is another potential sticky issue for you in the GOP base. That's what I heard. And uh, you, you told our own Shannon Bream not long ago that it's not a felony, illegal immigration. It's an act of love. You said lots of crimes, but lots of crimes are committed out of love. That's my question to you. It doesn't stop their prosecution. So what is it about illegal immigration? I think illegal immigration ought to be punished by coming out from the shadows, earning legal status over an extended period of time where you pay a fine, where you work, where you don't receive government assistance, where you learn English, where you don't, you know, where, where you're, you're deported if you commit a crime, uh, as is the law. Uh, there are no, there are very few other options that I can see. The option of self-deportation or making things so harsh is not really. Uh, I don't think that's practical. And rounding people up door to door isn't practical either. Mm -hmm. We need to enforce the enforce you know the laws of our country for sure. Enforce the border. Forty percent of illegal immigrants come with a legal visa and just stay. We ought to be able to figure that out. There's a lot of things we need to do, but a practical solution of getting to fixing the legal system is also allowing for a path to legalize status, not necessarily citizenship. Let me ask you about that. Yeah, because that's I, if, is that a distinction in your mind? Because I know sure. b before you've said uh, that you would support a path to citizenship. That was in 2012 to Charlie Rose. No, I've said I've said as long as there if that was the way to get to a deal where we turned immigration into a catalyst for high sustained economic growth, where we did all the things we need to do in border security, where we narrowed the number of people coming through family petition and dramatically expanded a like-kind number for economic purposes, which will help us grow and help the median rise up. In return for that, as a compromise, sure. But the plan in our book and the plan that I've suggested when I go out and speak, which is almost every day on this subject, I'm talking about a path to legalized status. Got it. What about uh, when you were governor of Florida, you supported driver's licenses for in-state illegal immigrants. You, you also uh, supported in-state tuition rates for the children of illegal immigrants. And your critics say, well, those are magnets. That, that will encourage more illegal immigration. Well, it didn't happen in Florida. Um, I proposed support of a state senator's bill that never even got a hearing. As it relates to in-state tuition, uh, it passed this year. A conservative Republican legislature, led by a very courageous uh, Speaker of the House, Will Weatherford, passed this, and the governor signed it into law. It didn't happen under my watch, but I supported that. Because if you've been here for an extended period of time, you have no nexus to the, the country of your parents, what are we supposed to do? Marginalize these people forever? I mean, there, there's got to be a point where we fix this system so that legal immigration is easier than illegal immigration and show some respect for people, a kid that might have been here 10 years, that might be a valedictorian of their high school, to say, no, 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 you're not allowed to go to college. Um, I, I just think there's a point past which we, we're over the line. I do understand and respect people's sentiments and frustrations about this broken system. And I totally understand why people are upset when Barack Obama with a, you know, just a stroke of a pen through executive action takes con unconstitutional actions. What about that? Would you reverse that if yeah, you became absolutely. president? Absolutely. I would. Because he, I talked to Marco Rubio about this. He had said, look, it's going to be very difficult to undo that once all these folks are here, and, the, you know, if that, if that legal challenge to his action uh, does not succeed. I but, think, by the way, I think it will succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, but how would you undo it once those folks are here? Passing and meaningful reform of immigration and make it part of it. Would you support the Senate bill that did not pass? I would have had a different bill that was based on the, um, you know, my, my deeply held views on this, but I would have supported that to get beyond this, sure. Uh, and, and it was a bill that I don't think they, I think there should have been more efforts made to, to get something like that passed. The, the criticisms of the bill in my mind was way too complex, hard to understand, uh, but they, they made a good effort to narrow family petitioning and expand economic immigrants, which is what we need to do. 15% of the immigrants coming to our country come for economic purposes. In Canada, there are more economic immigrants 
than the United States, and they have one tenth our population. Who, which system is going to be the one that creates investment and job growth and income growth and productivity growth? Ours, which has family as the driver of legal immigration, or or Canada's? This is another area where where folks say. I like Jeb Bush, but how can you ever get through the GOP primary with this position on I immigration? You know that there's a core wing of the party that, sure. for whom this will be a deal breaker. I don't know that. Um, I, I, I've been traveling over the last three months, and I get a sense that a lot of people can be persuaded, to be honest with you. Uh, but here's, here's the deal, Megan. If I go beyond the consideration of running to be an actual candidate, do you want people to just bend with the wind? to mirror people's sentiment, whoever's in front of you. Oh yes, I, I used to be for that, but now I'm for this. Is that the way we want to elect presidents? Running for president is tough. Serving as president, which should be the objective, is a little harder. Dealing with Putin is a heck of a lot harder than going to a town meeting in New Hampshire and explaining your views on immigration.